Hi there, my name is Kevin and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good while we're at it with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And I'm really excited about this week's video because well, we're going to be looking at a really cool feature of the CSS grid. It's when we use the repeat syntax. Um, if you're familiar with it, when you do repeat, you can say like repeat three and then comma and say one FR and it's going to give you three columns that are that size. Just like that so you don't have to write like the column widths over and over again if they're all the same. But there's this really, really neat feature that's included in the repeat, which is the auto fit or auto fill. It sort of makes making responsive stuff a lot easier, less media queries, really, really awesome, but they work really similarly. And sometimes it's hard to even know what the difference is. So that's what this video is about. It's exploring auto fit and auto fill, how they work and what's similar about them, but also what's different about them. But right before we jump into it, you're going to notice my setup in this one's a little bit different. I'm going to refer to a previous video that you might not know about and um, I might even say once or twice to go in the code and try things out yourself and you might be wondering what's going on. If you're curious about more information and all that, at the end of the video I'm going to be explaining a lot more about what's going on there. So let's dive right into it. Every time I talk about something with Grid I get so excited because there's so much cool stuff with Grid and this is one of those things. When we're using the repeat like we were just looking at, instead of using a set number of times like we just did, we had three, so we did three comma one FR. Instead of the three, we can use two keywords. We can use auto fit or auto fill as well. The two of them are different, though the differences can be confusing at times. So I'm going to try and explain it, but then it'll be a lot more clear, I think, once we actually look at it. But auto fit will fit the columns you've defined into the available space. It's a little bit more complicated what's actually going on, but essentially this is what it's doing. Whereas auto fill will keep adding in new columns, even if they're empty. Are you confused? Let's go take a look, because as I said, um, I think it'd be a lot more clear. So here, where we have my grid template columns, I can replace this with either auto fit or auto fill. So I'm going to start with the auto fill here, and I'm going to do auto fill, and I'm going to give it a min max, because without the min max, it doesn't really do much. I'm going to give this a minimum size of 200 pixels, comma, 1FR. This is, generally speaking, the large size, you're going to want to give it 1FR, and you will want to give it a minimum size. If not, the autofill won't really be doing its magic. So let's go take a look, and right now, it effectively looks the same. Nothing has really changed. But watch this. As I get smaller, before, just remember what happened before, actually. When I got smaller, at one point, we'd hit my minimum size. So my minimum size right now is 200. So it'd be 2, 4, 6, plus our gutter spacing there. That would just stop, and then I would get side-scrolling, right? Now, what just happened? Oh my goodness. Well, now I have a two column layout. Now let's keep going. Let's keep going. Now, oh, I get excited still and I played with this a lot. Now I have a one column layout. I don't have a media query in here. It's just magically working. Two columns, three columns, four columns. And if we go wider, we get five and six columns. And everything's just automatically flowing and going where it needs to go. Isn't that really cool and really fun? Uh, I think that's so cool. So what it's doing is it's saying that it has a minimum size of 200 pixels and a maximum size of 1FR. Right now, these are growing to fit the available space, but it knows the minimum size these are allowed to be is 200 pixels. So when we get to here, if we can fit three of them next to each other using that minimum size of 200 pixels, it's going to squeeze them in. So they shrink in size to their minimum and they all squeeze in next to each other. But then we're allowed to grow, we're allowed to grow, we're allowed to grow. But then boom, once that minimum size can squeeze down again and we can fit four of them, it's gonna do it automatically. That's just so much fun. I think that's so cool. Now, if I switch this to auto fit right now, you won't see a difference. It's gonna work exactly the same. Because of how this is laid out, there's not really anything that's going to change in it. So what I'm going to do to illustrate this a little bit better is we're going to take out, we're going to leave only two portfolio items and we're going to take all of these other ones off. I'm just going to delete all of those. And I'm also going to come up here and I'm going to comment out my title because my title is going to cause some problems with it, with how I've set this up to really illustrate what the difference is. So we're at here, we have my auto fill and min max of 200 and one FR. Let's go back here for a second and say auto fill will keep adding in new columns, even if they're empty. So let's go take a look. We're going to refresh here, make sure we're on a blank slate, and let's shrink down. So we have my one column. They're stacking. We know that already. Oh, we have room for two of them to go next to each other. They will. But here now, this is where we have the new columns will come in even if they're empty. So there's no content to put in the cell, but it's still going to create it because it's 
adhering to that min max I said. So now we have 200, 200. We had room for another 200. It's going to fit it in there. We have room for another 200. It's going to fit it in there. Let's bring this back down like this and let's switch this to auto fit instead. So auto fit instead of adding new columns, even if they're empty, it will fit the columns you've defined into the available space. And yes, it's more complicated if you actually look up with the spec, but essentially this is what it's really doing. Um, so as long as that's how you see it, it's all good. So here we have my columns like that. They're gonna one column, then we go up to two, but they're gonna stay two forever now because I don't have any extra content to add in there. Auto fit, I find a little bit more useful in that if I only have two items, it's not gonna all of a sudden start adding in these random empty columns that I'm not using. It's just gonna let my content grow. So it becomes a little bit more versatile. I could use that in different situations, whether I have three items or 10 items, and it's always going to work. Whereas the other one, sometimes if I was using it in an area of 10 and it was working well, I might bring that same class down to make two columns, but it's gonna break it here because then I get all these extra little columns squeezing in. There will be situations where both of them will come up though. So that's the difference between auto fit and auto fill. If it seems a little bit weird, play around with it a bit in here, make sure you understand it because it's a really subtle difference, but it's a really important difference as well. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. And the reason that lesson was a little bit different is it's actually a sample lesson from the course I'm currently building. And I'm really excited about this course. It's going to be about how to build responsive websites. It's gonna be a really in-depth dive. It's not just about responsiveness either. There's a CSS fundamentals module. There's a starting to think responsively module. We're gonna be looking at a deep dive into Flexbox, a deep dive into Grid, and we're gonna be building out multiple projects with it. It's gonna be a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to this launching. It's launching next week which is crazy. It's coming really fast. As soon as I finish recording this, I'm going back to editing videos for that course. And the reason it looked a little bit different in this video than my usual ones is because that was literally a lesson from Scrimba. And you might be going, well, what's Scrimba? Scrimba is this amazing platform and that's where the course is going to live. Now what's different about Scrimba than say watching something on a YouTube video like this or record screen recordings like you normally see is you can literally pause the video at any time and go in the code that's right there. Like in the video, you just, you click in, you change what's there. It happens in the preview window. It's all just happening right there. You can even save what you're doing. You can hit play. It goes back into the original lesson and you just keep watching with the teacher. So like say, you no, know, sometimes we scroll away too fast and you miss something. You hit pause, you scroll back up and you can see it. Or you want to change, you know, say I go and I say you can change this or change that. And you want to see what happens if you change it somewhere else. You can do that in like the code that's there. You don't have to try and copy everything that I'm doing in each lesson. It's really cool. It's an amazing platform. And I'm really excited to be launching my course on that platform because I think it's going to make it a lot easier for people to learn and to practice and to just develop their skills and break out of tutorial hell, which so many people get stuck into. So I'm really excited about this course. If you want to know more about it, there's a link down below. You can sign up and be one of the first people to know when it launches. Or if you're just interested in Scrimba and you want to check out Scrimba, there's a link to that in the description as well. I got to get back to working on the course though. So I'm going to let you go. I look forward to seeing you next week when I will have a launch video. I'll dive more into it. We'll have a few more preview lessons that I'll be giving next week as well. Looking forward to all that. But until then, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.